everyone. This is our first of a few math lessons that I will be um, delivering to you from afar. And uh, basically, this is how you're going to see them for the next couple of weeks. Um, you're going to see a screen like this, a video of me down in the corner uh, explaining, kind of going through these slides. And then also you have um, Im an image of my screen as well, which looks like basically like how it would look in math class. So you have the visual notes in front of you. You have me kind of talking through these. Um, I'm going to try to keep these videos pretty short, somewhere around five minutes if I can. Um, basically because I know a lot of you don't have unlimited internet and I don't want to be sucking up all of your data. Um, I encourage you to kind of pause these videos along the way, replay parts that you need to. And especially when we get you know through these slides, you know that I do uh, quite a few examples for you to try. Even though you're not in the physical classroom, I really encourage you, um, that would be a great time to pause the video, try the problem on your own. Really encourage yourself, keep your brain working, try that on your own, and then unpause the video and um, take a look at how I solved. Compare your work with mine and um, do some self-checking there. If you have an error, fine, that's, that, that's going to happen, but see if you can find out what your error is um, so that you can move forward in your math. So I guess without further ado, I'm just going to give this a try um, and we'll get going. So this is lesson 98. Um, the topic is the sum of the angle measures of triangles and quadrilaterals. Our learning targets for today are to identify the interior and exterior angles of polygons, finding the sums of interior angles of a triangle and of a quadrilateral, and then um, finding the measures of one interior angle in a triangle or quadrilateral when the measures of other angles are known. So again, this is one of those times in math I'm going to encourage you just to um, use the information that you know to find out what you don't know. So what we're going to review right away are just these angles when we're looking at a polygon. Look at this example here. We have a parallelogram in front of us. In this specific example, um, the interior angle in this case, of course, is angle two. It's on the interior or the inside of the polygon. The exterior angle then would be this exterior angle or the one, oops, that didn't work, the one on the outside, angle one. So um, just I'll, I'll kind of go a little bit more in depth here about exterior angles of triangles and quadrilaterals. I'm using the touchscreen Chromebook to do this and I'm not super familiar with it and it's not super easy to manipulate. So thanks for bearing with me. So looking at these exterior angles, it's just when it's as though you were to extend all of the lines or the sides out in a polygon. If you were to do that, that's why those lines are dotted. Um, if you were to do that, those create angles. And the important thing for you to know about that is that the sum of the measures of the exterior angles of either a triangle or a quadrilateral every time will always equal 360 degrees. Either shape, either one, either triangle or quadrilateral, 360 degrees will be the sum of the measures of those exterior angles. Moving forward, um, let's talk a little bit about interior angles. Triangles and quadrilaterals are different in that case. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle, no matter what type of triangle it is, how big it is, whatever, it will always equal 180 degrees. Those, the sum of those interior angles. And then, of course, as we look at quadrilaterals, get that to scroll. As we look at quadrilaterals, the sum of the interior angles for a quadrilateral then is 360 degrees. And that makes sense because we know if we cut a quadrilateral in half, we end up with two triangles. So if we were to have 180 degrees, 180 degrees, add those together, we of course would get this 360 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and move forward and give a couple of examples a try. I have two examples for you for this lesson. And this first one right here, I'm going to kind of, oh, well, here we go, just so you can see it. My face is kind of in the way for that picture. Let's try that. So um, before you pause the video to give this a try, I want to explain something really quickly and make sure you understand just um, the format of this question. The question is asking, what is this right here? You read that as, what is the measure of angle A in triangle ABC? So go ahead and pause, give it a try, and then check back in once you have your answer. So as I'm solving this, the first thing I'm going to consider is that, well, first of all, this is a triangle, and I know that the sum of the interior angles has to equal 180 degrees. 
Okay, I'm not going to worry about my label until my until the very end, until the answer. So I know that they have to equal 180 degrees. So now I'm asking myself, what do I know? So I can find out what I don't know. And so I have um, the, the measure of angle B is 60 degrees. And I have the measure of angle C is 70 degrees. And basically, I just need to add those together. Um, 60 plus 70 is 130. And now I just have a subtraction problem. I know what my uh, the, the sum of the measures needs to be, and I need to subtract what I have already. So 180 minus 130 degrees leaves me with 50 degrees. There's my little degrees. And actually, if I wanted to be really accurate, the best way to label this answer is the measure of angle A is, is that's supposed to be an equal sign, 50 degrees. Sorry about that. I'm still figuring out the stylus pen. So the measure of angle A in this case is 50 degrees. Let's try another one, this time with a quadrilateral. So again, I'm going to, you know, pause here, or I'm going to encourage you to pause here. Once you see the question, give it a try and unpause to see my work. Um, this is asking, what is the measure of angle T in quadrilateral QRST? So as I'm solving, uh, the first thing that I'm going to consider is that I know the, the sum of the measures of the interior angles needs to equal 360 degrees. So that needs to be my grand total. Now I have to figure out what I do know to find out what I don't know. So I know I have 80, 80, and 110. So um, 80 and 80 would be 160. And I also have an angle of 110. All right, so um, I just had a thought really quick, but this isn't a perfect parallelogram, so that doesn't work. Never mind. Bear with me. Uh, zero and zero is zero. Six and one is seven. And one and one is two. Where we're at right now is 270. We're going to subtract that from our total that we need it to be. So here we go. 270. We get zero. Regroup. Um, nine. 90 degrees. Ugh, it's hard to make a small degree sign, but just bear with me. Um, and of course, every good mathematician always kind of looks at their answer and asks themselves, is this reasonable? So when I see 90 degrees, I get a really clear picture in my head of what that looks like. A 90 degree angle is like a perfect corner. And when I look at angle T, yeah, that looks pretty perfect. So yeah, that makes sense. 90 degrees, if it was like wide open or looking really small and I got 90 degrees as an answer, I would probably reevaluate my work um, and make sure that I didn't have some type of addition or subtraction error. So again, best way to label this would be the measure of angle T is 90 degrees. I only have those two examples for you today. Um, replay this video if you need any further clarification. Um, I have provided handwritten notes for all of you. So if you're a visual person like me and those are helpful, refer to those notes. I have a short five question homework assignment for you. Um, it's, it's linked right in here in Google Classroom. You can submit it via Google Forms or do it on paper and submit, it, submit, submit a hard copy to me and send that back to school. Um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. I can't figure out. Uh...